Good afternoon, everyone. James Ophir here with you. This is a word from the Lord, and we are coming to you live, and we are looking for your phone calls and hope you're ready for a discussion from God's Word. As always, my phone number is 276-340-2653, and if you would like to call and be live on this program, the phone number is area code 336-427-9696. That's 427-9696 or 627-9563, 627-9563. Uh, this is the way you can be a part of this program, and we hope that you will uh, take advantage of that and call in, and let's have a Bible session together. I want to give you my content information again. Uh, my email address is a word from the Lord at gmail.com. A word from the Lord at gmail.com, and this is a program where you can call in with your Bible questions, your comments, and we'll have a discussion from God's Word together, and we hope that you will take advantage of that. Tell your friends and family, your your preachers, we'll be glad to have them call in. As a matter of fact, uh, we have a standing invitation that if you would, uh, if your preacher would like to come on and have a discussion uh, with us, uh, I'll be glad to pay for the airtime. It won't cost anything. He won't, won't cost him a dime. Just some of his time, and uh, we'll divide their time up and be glad to have a discussion about why we're different. We want to have that uh, conversation. That's a standing invitation. So if you know someone that's interested, uh, just give me a call, 276-340-2653, or you can call in on the program and let us know on the air. Again, those phone numbers are 336. That's the area code, 336. The phone number is 427-9696-427-WMYN or... 627-9563, 627-WLOE. Today we're going to be discussing uh, facts and feelings and uh, what really is truth and does it really matter what truth is. Uh, we're going to be discussing some uh, things like a new ad that uh, CNN uh, put out about facts first. You may have seen that. You may not have. Uh, we're going to be listening to a part of an interview uh, by the Family Policy Institute of Washington. I'm not uh, real familiar with them totally, but I do want to uh, uh, go through some of this interview. You might find that interesting about gender identity and uh, uh, a lot of Bible uh, and, and a little much more. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that. So again, if you'd like to be on the program, uh, feel free to call in 427-9696-627-9563. And I uh, hope that you are, are uh, if you're listening on the radio, you can also uh, download the rcr24.com, the Rockingham County Radio app, onto your smartphone or your tablet, and you can listen that way. I know a lot of people are listening uh, that way uh, outside of this area, some probably in, within the area that maybe can't get the, the radio signal, but they can definitely listen in their cars or they can uh, listen on their phone and so forth. So please tell your friends and family about that. Okay, so let's get on into the program here. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this ad that uh, CNN has put out. I thought it was kind of interesting, number one, that that they would put one out. But you may or may not have seen uh, this ad. I don't know. Probably not. I don't know who really watches CNN. Uh, uh, I guess I shouldn't have maybe said said that. But uh, anyway, I thought it was a pretty good idea. I want to paint the picture of the ad for you so you can so you can visualize it it's really not much visual to the to the advertisement the commercial but uh, i want to play that for you so that you can listen to it and just see what they have to say that it's called facts first cnn facts first and i think that's kind of humorous because uh i think news uh, outlets in general aren't particularly uh concerned about facts First, whether or second or third or, or however, but anyway, I want to uh, want you to listen to this ad. It is uh, the picture is just a red apple. It's a nice red apple, maybe a, a, a gala apple or I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look like a Rome apple, but it's a nice red apple. Looks uh, inviting. But here is the the ad, and this is what what they have to say about facts first. This is an apple. Some people might try to tell you that it's a banana. They might scream banana, banana, banana over and over and over again. They might put banana in all caps. 
you might even start to believe that this is a banana. But it's not. This is an apple. All right, this is an apple. So you can scream banana, banana, banana. You can say whatever, and, and, and it's still just an apple. Well, that's 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 really good, and I think it's very, uh, I think it's very interesting that, that that is put out today in society when we're told not to judge, we're not to discriminate, and people can just do what they want to be. Now, the reason why I think that's interesting is because of the nature of the environment we live in. You know, people today, we people don't want to be told that something is not something. They, they just don't like to be told no. They don't like to be told no, it's not. And <clears throat> I think that's very, uh, it's very telling about the, the kind of society we live in. Now, friends, th think about this. If we're talking about facts first, and uh, we're being told that we have to insist that an apple is really an apple. We can't call it a banana. We can't call it a pineapple. We can't call it a grapefruit. We can't call it anything other than an apple. Then what does that say about the other aspects of our society, of our life, where we're told you cannot identify with the facts what things are? Now, the reason I say that is because I want, to, <clears throat> I want you to listen to an interview that was conducted on the campus of Seattle University. And this interview was conducted by a Mr. Joseph Blackholm. He's the director of the Family Policy Institute of, of Washington. And he was on the campus of Seattle, uh, you know, Seattle University. And he's talking to students about gender identity. And now remember, you can't call an apple a banana. You just you just can't do that. That's what the CNN ad said. And so with that in mind, what does that say about this whole society that's so wrapped up in, well, we, we can't call uh, people what they really are. Now listen to, and I'm going to start and stop some of this because it's very interesting. We'll make some comments. But again, this is, uh, this is uh, Mr. Joseph. Uh, Black Home, Director of Family Policy Institute of Washington uh, on the campus of Seattle University. He's going to go through some of that and listen to some of the, uh, the questions that he asked and about uh, gender identity. I'm going to let, let him set this up. In light up. of all the conversation about gender and identity, we began to wonder if there's even a difference between men and women anymore. We went to Seattle University to find out aware of the conversation going on in Washington State right now around kind of gender identity, gender expression issues, and the ability to access facilities on those grounds? Yeah. Yeah, uh, like, you know, there's there's gender neutral bathrooms and like, like all the dorms and stuff like that. I think that gender is fluid, so if you want to use a bathroom because that's a place and that's a space where you feel comfortable and safe in doing so, then I think that that's completely fine. I think that if whoever you think you are, if you're male or female, then that's the bathroom you should go into. I think if it doesn't really negatively affect anybody, then I think anyone be, should be able to choose what gender they uh, choose to identify as. People, no matter what their gender identification is, they should be allowed to use whatever restrooms they should they, they feel like they identify with. Is there a difference in your mind between men and women? No, no. Let's stop there for a minute. So all these people, well, gender is fluid. Um... Uh, you know, gender neutral bathrooms. Listen, I, I don't have a problem with with a bathroom like a unisex bathroom. Walmart has these family bathrooms. That's fine. That's uh, that's great. I think that's I think that's a good idea, really, where uh, men or women can go into this particular bathroom and be one at a time. I'm not all for this. You know, men go into the bathrooms with women. Or I wouldn't want my, my, my daughters to go into a bathroom where a man who feels like he's a woman or thinks he's a woman goes in. But the idea that these people are saying, well, I think it's a good idea for you know gender neutrality and uh, whatever you identify with and so forth, that, that's a problem. That's a problem. But remember, facts are facts. You know, you can scream all you want to. I think I'm a man. I think I'm a woman. And that doesn't change the fact that you're either a man or a woman. You, know, you can identify as an LGBTQ, RST, whatever, whatever letter you want. And I, I think they really ought to just put a question mark there if that's really what they want to be identified as. But 
uh, this is where we're, where we're going. No one can say what the facts are when it comes to things like men and women's gender. Now, you say, James, what does this have to do with, with Bible? This is, this is a word from the Lord, and you're sitting here talking about uh, gender equality and, and bathrooms and so forth. Well, stay with me. Stay with me because it all comes down to facts. Can we or can we not just stick to the facts? Now, listen again, or continue listening to what he says. He's going to ask the question, is there a difference between men and women? Is there a difference between men and women? And listen to what these people say. Um, no, I guess. I mean, um, possibly. In Stop for a minute. Uh, no, yes, possibly. There's no difference between men and women. Is this really what we're talking about here? People can't look, let's say there's facts. There's men and there's women. And we can't definitively say there is a difference between men and women. Listen, I hope there's a difference between men and women. Uh, and I think we all be able to tell the difference. Now listen to what this girl says. She's, She's about the smartest one of the bunch, and, and she's really not sure of herself. Listen to what she says. General, yes. But I don't know why it's in five. She doesn't know why she thinks in general there's a difference between men and women. Come on, people. Really? We don't know the diff we don't know why we think there's a difference? Can we just say because an apple is an apple? An orange is an orange, a banana is a banana, and a pineapple is a pineapple. Can we not just say this is the truth of the matter? Socially, currently, yes, there is. There is no need for that difference to exist uh, scientifically and logically. If you think that you're a male, if you think that you're... Now, did you hear that guy? There's no need scientifically to have a difference between male and female. Hello? Just the basis of carrying on the species. Did this guy not go to biology class in eighth grade? Now, now, friends, I'm I'm being really. I, I guess this is really uh, what being ridiculous, absurd. But we're trying to illustrate absurdity with absurdity. This is this is crazy stuff. And I think most people in their right minds are going to go, "What is our world coming to? What is our school system going to coming to? This is this is the so-called higher education." And wh where are we going from here? Now, he goes on, he asks another question. Society forces on to people. And how do you know the difference between men and women? By what people think they are. So you can't, like, judge someone just on, like, their looks. I don't think there's any one way to really distinguish between a man or a woman. And I don't think it's necessary. It's not necessary to distinguish between man and woman? For, really? Yeah, there's not <laughs> people. This is just this is stupidity gone to seed. This is ignorance gone to seed. We cannot tell the difference between a man and a woman, and we're the smart people, right? We're the we're the smart species on the planet. Uh, it's not always consistent. It has a high probability, like ninety eight percent of the time, I can get it right. There is some ambiguity. I think yeah, there are ways to tell, but. Then again, you can always be wrong. What would you say I am? Just judging off of your looks, I would say that you're a male. I would probably assume a man, but then you never know. A male. Why would you say that? Based on how I look at you. <laughs> Do you think that's a problem? Yeah, probably. Do you think the difference between men and women matters for any reason? Uh, no, not really. I think most sociologists agree that uh, the concept of gender is more of a societal construct. I do think it... Gender is a societal concept? In other words, we just decided, hey, we're going to start making a difference between male and female. No, friends. People, this is, this is, we're dealing with facts here. Matters somewhat, yeah. To me, no. I don't, I don't feel as if it matters to me because uh, at the end of the day, the person is just a person. Now, that guy said it doesn't matter between male and female, because in the end of the day, it's person to person. Well, I, I don't I don't know. I wonder how many dates this guy's getting. Really? It doesn't matter? If it doesn't matter, people, then why do we, you know, why do we have these words, male and female? 
Why do we have pronouns, he, she? Why do we have different dress? Why do we act differently? How do we even carry on the survival of the species? We're dealing with facts here. The facts of the matter are there is a difference, but these people don't want to admit the difference. No, I don't think it should matter. And the differences on a uh, social level are simply a product of a biased society. Then is there a reason to have those labels, male or female? I don't think so. I think that it's, again, a social construct of this binary that we're given at birth. There is kind of a difference, but at the same time, if someone wants to identify as one or both or as nothing, I also find that completely okay and... This, this is this is a problem, folks. This is this is we're we're in bad shape here. Now listen to this one last guy, this one last comment that's made. Or I'm good. Sometimes when I call a lady sir by accident, they get very offended. Now why would that be the case? Why would a woman get offended if you call her sir? I mean, maybe you should explain to her, hey, we can't we can't be arguing with the facts here. You know, we can't be judging, and, and it really doesn't matter. Male and female don't really matter. There's no really differences between male and female, and you shouldn't be so angry. Really? See, friends, this is what we're, this is the problem. Now, you say, well, why is this, why is this a problem? Well, because if we can't understand, or if we're not willing to make judgments based upon facts, between male and female, what else are we not willing to do? That's, that's the whole point I'm trying to get you to see, friends. If we can't determine that there is a male and there is a female, and if we can't objectively say, yes, there is a difference between male and females, and if we can't say differences do matter, and if we can't say there is a reason for them, then... What else are we not going to be able to make judgments on? What else are we not going to be able to give a, a, a sound reasoning on? And I'm saying, you, you think, well, James, this, you just, you know, th this is a, some craziness that's going off, uh, uh, on out there in the wacko left. No, friends, it's going on all, all over this United States. I mean, here in North Carolina, we had a bathroom bill. I mean, everybody was up in arms about a bathroom bill. And... Why? Why is there a problem with saying you should go to the bathroom according to the gender in which you were born? And yet people want to say, well, there's no differences. There's no differences. We shouldn't make these decisions <clears throat> or these, or these uh, uh, judgments. Well, friends, facts are facts. You can scream and you can holler and you can get all mad and say, you know, She's a man and he's a woman. All you want to it doesn't change the fact. It doesn't change the facts of the matter. And that's really what we're concerned about. That's really what we're dealing with here. Facts do matter. Now, what if I told you, friends, that if we don't deal with facts, if we don't deal with the truth of something, it's going to cause us problems on down the line. Now listen, Jesus said in John 8, in verse 32, he said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right, that's John 8 and verse 32. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, friends, truth is objective. That is, it's, it's a standard. It doesn't change. People can say, well, I, I, I think truth is, is relative. Truth is fluid. It, truth is what you think it is. Now, friends, do you really want to go with that? Truth is what we think it is. I mean, that sounds like somebody's been on drugs out here on a, on a trip or something. You can't tell what truth is. Someone says, well, I think, you know, I think the, the moon is made out of cheese. Well, we don't know. I guess it is. If you want to say it is, it is. My friends, if we can't come to a, an understanding and if we can't come to a, 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 the ability to say this is something that's true and this is something that's false, we're going to be in trouble. What happens when we start talking about our souls? If we can't get the physical things right, how can we not get the spiritual things right? How are we going to get the spiritual things right? Remember what Jesus said to Nicodemus? 
In John 3, Nicodemus was a man, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night. This is John 3, verse 2. And he said, We know that our teacher come from God. No man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now listen, as Jesus is explaining to him uh, about uh, being born again, born of the water and the Spirit, listen to what he says. He says, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou master of Israel and knowest not these things? Now we might stop and say, You mean to tell me you're, a, you're in college and you don't know the difference between a man and a woman? You mean to tell me that you're an adult and you don't know the difference between a man and a woman? You mean to tell me you're a grown-up and you have a job and you have kids and you don't know if something is true or not? You can't tell if something is, uh, you know, a male or female or you can't make the decision because it doesn't matter because truth is fluid? Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, and this is verse 11, He says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we know and testify we have seen and receive not our witness. If if I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Now, friends, if we can't get things as basic as gender down and we can't get things as simplified as what a man is or what a woman is, how in the world are we going to understand <clears throat> things that affect our spiritual man, our spiritual person. Maybe I should say that way. Let's be politically correct. Our spiritual person. How are we, how are we going to understand that? If we can't objectively say this is truth. You see, you can scream all you want to, and you can yell, and you can put it in bold type, and you can say, well, he's a man, he's a woman, he's a, he's a, she's a man, she's a woman, whatever. It doesn't change the fact of what it really is. You're either a man or a woman. Now, here's a good case in point. You remember, and I know, how could you forget, you know, Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. I'm going to call him, I, I, we can call him Caitlyn, but he's still a he. I don't care what you call him. But, you know, a uh, um, year or so ago, I guess last year or a while back, and I haven't heard much about him in the news, about what, what's going on with, with Bruce uh, you know, Caitlin, Bruce Caitlin, but I believe he has actually finally gone through with this trans, uh, this operation. He's, he's totally transgendered, I, I believe, and, uh, he's actually, he's actually, uh, having regrets. He's actually having regrets. Now, you say, well, James, why don't you bring him up? Here's why, because truth, because truth is not being told to you and not being told to us. People are not being uh, given the truth of, of things, and that's why, that's one reason why they can't make good judgments. Or that's why they're not willing to say man, woman. That's why they're so, you know, vacillating and flip-flopping on, well, I don't know if it's a man or a woman or, you know, be who you want to be, whatever. Um... Uh, some time back, <clears throat> the uh, there was a, a report, a book came out uh, about Bruce Caitlyn Jenner. And uh, this is what it said. This was uh, by Ian Halpern. And uh, he wrote a book called The Kardashian Dynasty. And this is what he said about Bruce Jenner. Um, now, this, you know, Bruce Jenner, former Olympian. I don't know, was it decathlon? He was, he was you know, owned a box of Wheaties, whatever. But he said he was he was reconsidering transitioning back into a man. And here's what he says. One source confirmed to me, Caitlin, has made whispers of sex change regret, hinting she, he, might go back to being Bruce Jenner. In other words, he's going to detransition. Or he's going to admit that he is a man in the next couple of years. That's what that's what he's speculating. You know why? Because we're told it doesn't really matter. And that gets into your mind, well, it doesn't really matter. But here's a man who actually goes through with it. He's been, he's been really brainwashed, convinced by the masses, by the media, 
and the uh, 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 society that, hey, this is, you know, this is okay, and now he does it, and now he's regretting it. Now, here's, here's what, this is uh, an article by Ben Shapiro, and this is what he says. He says, so here are the two possibilities for, for Bruce Jenner. He says, number one, a mentally ill man thought he was a woman and was reinforced in this perspective by perverse media and pathetic medical establishment, urging him to overrule his own second thoughts, underwent surgery and hormone therapy, realized that surgery and hormone therapy did not cure mental illness, and now regrets his suffering and is finally considering detransitioning. Or, here's the second option, a man magically became a woman, but this woman now wants to become a man. Friends, this is a mental problem. This is a mental problem with people wanting to become something they're not. You're either a man or a woman. You're either a boy or a girl. And here's what, here's what society does not want us to know, does not want to tell us. Don't, the, the truth that they don't want to hear. Now, they want to scream and yell, banana, 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 when really we're talking about an apple. That's really what it gets down to. Friends, do you, do you ever stop and think how many times you may be being lied to or rather maybe not getting all of the information that you really need? Did you know that suicide rates <clears throat> among transgenders do not decrease thanks to sex change surgery? In other words, here's people that are contemplating suicide because they're not happy in the body they're in. They, they go through transgender procedures and they still have these thoughts. They still, they're still not happy where they are. The suicide rates among transgenders do not drop after surgery. By 41% of transgender people attempt suicide sometime in their life. Just 4.6% of the rest of the population does that. Think about that, friends. Five people out of 100 contemplate suicide. Out of transgender people, 41% consider committing suicide. But yet we're told, oh no, it's okay. If you're an apple and you want to become a banana, that's fine. Friends, here's the harm. The harm is you can yell and scream all you want to about, you know, this is something, you're, you're, an, you're a banana, you're a banana, you're a banana when you're really an apple. And it's not going to help you. You can scream all you want to. I'll be happier as a woman, if you're a man, you can scream all you want to. I'll be happier as a woman, like Bruce Jenner. And in the end, you're not going to be happier. Now, this is, this is facts. We're dealing with facts here. And so the suicide rate, 45% uh, of transgender people who undergo hormone therapy attempt suicide. That's higher than the general transgender suicide rate. All right? So... Friends, it just is not helping. This is, this is what we're calling the lies instead of the facts. This is the lies instead of the facts. Now, here's something else to consider. Did you know most, I've heard uh, all, all these people, I've heard a woman say, actually uh, I think my daughter was reading a post on Twitter or Facebook, Insta, Insta chat, whatever. I don't know <clears throat> all these different things, but the lady was going, well, if I had a, if I had a, if my son wanted to become a woman, or maybe it was a daughter wanted to become a boy, I would do all that I can to help them. Now, here's, what, here's some facts that you need to know. According to Dr. Paul McHugh, former head of psychiatry at John Hopkins University, finds that 70 to 80% of all children with transgender feelings grow out of it. This, this is important because the media has already told parents that children... Uh, who are confused about sex should consider whether they are they are transgender. So society says, well, if your child says something about, well, they they don't know if they're a boy or a girl, they have feelings like they're a girl when they're really a boy, or vice versa. Then society says, well, you need to act upon that. You need to you need to help them determine, or maybe they're transgender. Maybe they're maybe they need a sex change or whatever. When in reality, they would grow out of it. The majority of them would, but no one wants to say that. So we're talking about facts here. Why do we hide the facts? Why do we not admit the facts when, uh, when they're right there in front of us? You know why? Because people, they have, they have a, uh, an agenda. They have a, 
uh, a mindset. This is what we want to promote. We want to promote something that's actually going to destroy society instead of something that will help society. Here's one more point I want you to think about this. Uh, we're talking about facts here. Transgender's regret is very real. This is according to the, the, uh, an article in the Feder Federalist by Walter Heyer. Uh, a man who underwent sex, a sex change uh, surgery and then he regretted it. He said... Study commissioned by The Guardian of the UK in 2004 re reviewed 100 studies and found 20% regret. Consider the findings of a 2011 Swedish study. This is, this is different, a different study. Published seven years after the 2004 review. It looked at mortality and morbidity after gender reassignment surgery and found that people who changed genders had a higher risk of suicide. In this study, all sex reassigned persons in Sweden, in Sweden from 1973 to 2003, that's uh, 191 male to females and 133 female to males, were compared to a comparable random control group. The sex reassignment persons had substantially higher rates of death from cardiovascular disease and suicide, and substantially higher rates of attempted suicide. Gender Surgery is not effective treatment for depression, anxiety, or mental disorders. Now, that's exactly what we're talking about with Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner thinks that he wants to be a woman, and so he goes through all the procedures. And now you know what? Now he's regretting it. In, um, in an article by, in Vanity Fair, this is what said about Bruce Jenner, that he was pacing back and forth. <laughs> Uh, down the dark hallway, and a panic attack lasted about 15 seconds. But a single thought continued to course through his mind. What did I just do? What did I just do to myself? He called a counselor. A counselor comes from the Los Angeles Gender Center. And she said such reactions were, were often induced by pain re uh, medication and she said such second-guessing was human and temporary. The thought she has since passed and has not come back. There is no buyer's remorse. Not that it matters anyway because there's no turning back. Well, you know, you can say, well, I don't have any buyer's remorse, but it's too late now. What do you do? See, friends, this is what we're talking about, facts. Now, the reason I'm saying all this is because it gets down to can we really say the truth or not? Can we really tell people the truth without them being offended? Can we tell them the truth without being the bad guy for saying it? Now, we're going to take a break. I'm going to, I'm going to play you a public service announcement. We're going to come back if you want to be a part of the program. Give your thoughts or discussion along these matters about truth and how it affects us. Uh, the phone number is 336 Four two seven nine six nine six. That's four two seven W M Y N or six two seven nine five six three six two seven W L O E. Listen to this public service announcement, and we'll be right back. This is a public service announcement for individuals. This is a question for uh, pastors or preachers who use instrumental music in worship. Uh, brought to you by the Church of Christ. But apparently you don't know truth, because if you knew truth, you wouldn't teach your people, watch it, that they're under law of Moses with tithe and mechanical instruments of music. Now you bring the tithing over and the instrumental music over, but what about the burnt offering? I hear the music, but I don't smell no beef. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? In these churches, they got... In your church, every one of them, they got mechanical music, they teach tithing, right? I don't smell no beef. Where's the beef? You had to go back to the Old Testament to get the music. You had to go back to the Old Testament to get the tithing. Why didn't you bring in the, the beef? Where's the beef? All the congregation worship. So they were worshiping on the Lord Moses and had... Singers sang, trumpets sound, and all of this continued until the burnt offering was finished. Ask your pastor. 
some of you people are watching this television program. Ask your pastor. Hey, where's the thing? I don't think there's anybody like right that. All right, there's a public service announcement about uh, those who use mechanical instruments of music. Just something to think about. If you're going back to the Old Testament to get your authority, why don't you go back and get the beef and throw the, uh, you know, let's uh, cook a uh, uh, sacrifice, offer a burnt offering or something like that, because that, after all, that's in the same in the same place as well. Okay, 336-427-9696. 336-427-9696 or 627-9563, 627-9563. We're talking about truth and how it doesn't matter how much you say it, how loud you say it, how much you proclaim it, how much you want to uh, want something not to be the case. It's really not going to change it because truth is not fluid. Now, friends, I want you to consider this. In Matthew chapter 15, Verses 1 through 14. In Matthew chapter 15, Jesus <clears throat> excuse me, is dealing with individuals who had added something to truth. All right? Now, in their mind, they were actually doing the will of God. In their mind, they were actually uh, worshiping God. But notice what he says. They asked Jesus, Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? He said, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honored not his father or his mother, shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Now, let's stop there for a moment. Now, what did Jesus just do in this situation? He talked to some individuals. They asked him a question about, you know, why do you, why do you violate this tradition of the elders? And basically, Jesus said, here's truth. The truth is, your tradition is contrary to the commandments of God. The truth is you are violating the commandments of God. The truth is you're not really doing what God said do. Now, later on, we're going to find that they got upset about this. But the point I'm wanting to show you is Jesus told them the truth when all during that time frame, all in that, that society, they were making up their own truth. See, they were out there crying, they were basically saying, banana, 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 when really what it was was an apple. What they were really doing is they were saying, we're worshiping God, we're worshiping God, when what they were really doing was making the commandments of God in effect. They were saying, well, <clears throat> you know, if you, instead of giving to uh, your father and mother or taking care of your father and mother, what, you, what they were doing is they're saying, well, let's, let's just give a gift. Let's just uh, uh, give a gift that uh, uh, to God and say, well, we would have helped you out, uh, mom or pop. We would have helped you out, but you know what? Uh, we gave it to the Lord, so we don't have to help you. You see what they're doing? They're saying, well, we're doing something for God. Isn't that changing the truth? Isn't that doing, uh, creating their own truth, their own version of truth? That's really what they're doing. And so Jesus says, no, what you're doing is you're making the commandments of God of none effect by, by your commands, uh, by your traditions. He goes on to say, ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now Jesus, is, he's, he's pretty bold in his truth speaking there, isn't he? And he is clearly telling people who are, is a hypocrite and who is not. He's saying, look, you are hypocrites because you say that you're worshiping God, but you're really not. He said, this people draweth nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now, friends, think about this. Given what we've been discussing, what we've been talking about, and the fact that some people just do not want to say this is true. Some people just do not want to say 
Well, I really can't tell if this is true or not. Now, Jesus, if Jesus was like this, if Jesus was on the, the campus of Seattle University and he was one of these college students that had been asked a question about, about truth or about the law, he'd say, well, you know, if they think they're worshiping God or they feel like they're worshiping God, then I guess they're okay with it. I really can't say that they are or they're not. Well, I'm glad Jesus is not like one of those individuals. I'm glad he's not uh, like one of these individuals that can't tell the difference between truth and a lie. Listen to what he says. Uh, verse 10, it goes on and he says, He called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Now, friends, I want you to think about this. Jesus spoke the truth about what they were doing, even though it was going to cause them to not like it. Now, the, the, the disciples said that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying. Um, truth does offend. Truth does offend. There's individuals that don't like to hear the truth. Now, I do want to explain something about this word offend. This word offend is not uh, necessarily the same way that we use the word offend. This is a, a, a word that is, that's translated offend. It's really a scandalizo, and it means to entrap or to trip up or cause to stumble. So the Pharisees were having trouble with this teaching because it was making them go against what they believed. It was making them go against what they taught. It was making them go against their traditions. And that's really hard to do for some people. That's really difficult. That's really difficult to do because, uh, you know, that's something you've always done, something you've always heard, something you've always uh, uh, carried on, I guess. This is the way of life. So um, this is why it was causing them to causing them to uh, uh, to stumble. Now, I want you to think about this. Does truth affect you the same way? If someone tells you the truth, are you having a are you having trouble listening to it or accepting it? Is that how is that how you hear the truth? Jesus said. They, he was told, well, these, these folks were offended. They, were, they tripped up by it. They're stumbling at it. It's hard for them to give up their traditions. Well, friends, it's always hard for people to give their traditions, give up their traditions. But Jesus said, he said, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Now, friends, at some point, we have to say, truth is more important than letting people think that if they want to be a woman and they're really a man, that that's okay. Truth has to be more important than someone saying, well, I think I'm worshiping God. I believe I'm worshiping God. I claim to worship God. Therefore, I am worshiping God. We have to say, well, you know what? Truth is a little more important than that. And you can say all you want to that I'm worshiping God. And you can say all you want to about, well, I'm in good standing with God. But if you're not, if you're not, shouldn't we proclaim the truth and tell you the difference? Shouldn't we be able to say and shouldn't, wouldn't you want to hear that, hey, I, I need to change something? <clears throat> Are we so hardened to the truth that we just can't accept, accept it? <clears throat> now, one of the problems that God's people have always had, and I think the same problem that people have today is, is that individuals come along and they want to tell them, or they want people to tell them what they want to hear. They don't want people to give them the, the hard saying. They don't want people to give them the, the difficult things, the things that are going to make them change, the movement of their comfort zone. They want people to speak, into them, speak to them smooth things. In Isaiah 30, verse 10, they said, see, uh, Say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, Speak unto us smooth things, Prophesy deceits. Now friends, 
is that really where we are in a society where we don't want to hear the truth? We just want to hear the things that make us feel good? You know, we don't want to hear truth about how we are to worship. We don't want to hear truth about the church we're in. Or we don't want to hear truth about what the Bible says about society. We just want to go along and we want everything to be smooth and we want everything to be comfortable and and uh, we want people to, we want to allow people to let them do what they want to do. Is that really where we are? Is that where we are as a society? In Jeremiah 8 and verse 11, Jeremiah said that they said, peace, peace, uh, that the, the prophets and the priests deal falsely. For they, prof they, they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people, saying slightly, peace, peace, when there is no peace. That's Jeremiah 8, verses uh, 10 and 11. See, they, they don't really want peace. They just say it. And that's where we are in society. We can't say, you know, you, you just can't tell someone, no, you're not. But friends, are you doing society a favor by going along with the facade, with the charade? That, well, yeah, if a man wants to be a woman, he can be. If he just says it, if, if he says it loud enough and strong enough, he is. Is that really where we are? So, uh, you know, you can say it all you want to. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that's what it is. You can say it all you want to, and it and it won't change. It won't change the truth. Okay. You gonna work with the Lord? Hey James, I'm uh, not really sure of your topic today. I'm I'm having a lot of interference on my radio here in Danville, but uh, it seems like you're talking about the importance of truth. Is that's correct? Is I'm I'm pretty close on this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you know, if there's if there's no truth, then I'm wondering how the name that you know James chapter two speaks of a worthy name by which we're called. And if there's no truth, how could it ever be said that that anyone could blaspheme that worthy name? Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so, yeah, that's a good Sorry. point. Go ahead. Yeah, James two seven. Yeah. So do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called? Well, we know in the Bible in Acts eleven twenty six, the disciples of Christ were first called Christians, and so people have gotten so far away from that. I mean, everybody claims to be a Christian whether they call themselves Quaker or right Lutheran or whatever. Right. Well, what we were, what we, where we started off was, uh, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you on the okay. phone. Yeah. Okay, okay. <clears throat> well, where we started off was we, we were talking about individuals that, that can't say whether someone is a man or a woman. You know, this idea of we can't identify a gender, male or female, and how, uh, I don't know, did, have you seen the new CNN ad about this is, an am, this is a banana? It's a pic. Uh, it's a pic. Well, I don't know if anybody really watches CNN, but anyway, uh, they had a picture of an apple. And and it says, you know, people can say this is a banana and they can yell it and type it in bold letters and scream it from the heavens, but it's still an apple. You know, it's not a banana. And right. that's really what we're talking about. So what we're what I'm going to get to in the next in the next little segment is, and you're right on you're right on topic with me, is eventually we have to come to the conclusion about what about people who say that they are children of God. Right. You know, now you can you can yell it and scream it all you want to, but that doesn't change the truth of whether you are or not. Exactly right. And so Jesus said, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make." That's the exactly truth. right. Exactly right. So the whole the whole problem that people have is they don't. If you don't say the truth, or if you're not willing to get with the facts, on uh, well, if you can't tell a man that he's a man or a woman that she's a woman then we're going to have a really hard time when it comes to how do you identify as a Christian or not? Because, I mean, how many people would you say identify as a Christian? They'll tell you they're a Christian. Oh, just about everybody I talk to. Yeah, yeah. They'll tell you they're in a denomination, and then they'll turn around and say, but I'm a Christian. Yeah. Well. I know that it can't be the case. That right. Any name will do. Jesus said in Matthew seven twenty one, not everyone saith unto me, 
Lord knows, right? the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Right. Now, <clears throat> so you're, you're exactly right. That's and that's that's really where we're, you know, that's what we're headed to. So well, I, I don't want to give away you. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I appreciate your call, and I'm sorry okay. you're not not been it. You're not able to hear very well. I guess it's uh, cloudy day. You're you're on the uh, western side of Danville, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I may have to get me a, a better antenna, but. Uh, Right. No, about, about every third word or so. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, well, we'll put it up on on uh, uh, YouTube as well, so you can go back and listen to that later on. Sounds sounds good. I hope you're getting out to to people that, that can hear it. I hope so too. All right. They're taking it in. All, All right. right. Thanks for your call. Thank you. All right. So, so uh, while we have a little time left, let's let's look at this now. As I said to the caller there. Really where we're getting to is, what about people who call themselves Christians? Do they really identify that just because they say it? Is that, does that change the fact of whether they are or not? In John 8, verse 38, listen to what the Bible says. Jesus said, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. <clears throat> they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now you see to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Now listen to what the Jews said. Ye, Jesus said, ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why? Do ye not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father will ye do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you cannot believe me. Now listen to what they said in verse 46. Uh, or excuse me, uh, they said, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, they said, uh, "Well, we be born." They were saying we were born of, of, of Abraham. I kind of just went ahead of myself here. Said uh, we, we were born of Abraham. Now, friends, if you, if you were in the Jews, and you were uh, rejecting what Christ said, here's what Jesus said: What you do really determines who you are. If you were one of Abraham's children, if you were really one of Abraham's children, you would do what God said. Now, friends, you know, spiritually speaking, you can be a child of Abraham. In Galatians 3, in Galatians 3 and verse uh, 7, the Bible says that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Now, who are they of faith? Individuals who by faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17, have obeyed the gospel, have done what God said, they have become children of Abraham. God said <clears throat> to Abraham, in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Galatians, uh, Genesis 22, verse 18. Now listen, in Galatians 3, and verse 16, he said the seed that he was talking about was Christ. So through Christ, all nations are going to be blessed. Now, listen to what he said. Let's come down. I'm in Galatians 3. I know I'm kind of hurrying through this because I'm running up on the clock. <clears throat> but listen, in Galatians 3, listen to what Paul says. Paul said, uh, verse 24, The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, those people in John 8 claimed to be Abraham's children. Well, they were according to the flesh. But spiritually speaking, they weren't because they weren't doing what God said. And friends, folks today can claim, well, I am a child of Abraham. I'm a child of God. But you know what the Bible will say? The facts. The facts will say, if you were not baptized into Christ, 
you have not put on Christ, and therefore you are not part of Abraham's seed, and you're not part of the heirs according to promise. And the reason I say that is because people today will argue, fight, complain, moan and groan, because they don't want to do what God said, but yet they still want to be a child of God. No, friends, that's, we're talking about truth here. The truth of the matter is, you can tell if someone is a child of God or if they're not. And if you haven't obeyed the gospel that the Bible talks about, you are not a child of God. Now you're saying, well, James, I've done that. Well, really? Why is it that <clears throat> individuals, individuals will claim that they are part of the church of Christ and then turn around and deny being in the church of Christ? They'll say the church is not important, the church is not important, but when you say, well, Christ had a church, then they all want to be part of it. Well, let me listen to, uh, I, man, I don't know if I have time for this. Uh, let's see, I've got, I've got a couple minutes. Listen to some of these individuals, what they say about the church. When they're, when they're confronted with it, listen to what they have to say. Uh, my, my church is in the Bible. Would you provide that scripture for us so we can read it to the television audience? Yeah, chapter 20 and verse 28. You read that. What what chapter that is? Chapter 20. What book, what book is it? Acts, Acts chapter 20 uh -huh. and verse 28. Okay. Your church is in the Bible? Yeah. All right. Could I read that for you? Yeah. All right. In Acts 20 and verse 28, that passage says, Take heed unto yourselves and to all of the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Now, are you listening, television audience? Listening carefully. To feed the church of God. Church of God. Well, the church of God and the church of Christ are one and the same thing. That's but, right. That's right. That's right, Church of God. The Church of God is the Church of Christ. That's uh, right. This is Noah Vi from Stanley Town uh, Church of God. Isn't that right? No, I'm I'm a Baptist. Now you and called I'm on that. You called on the other day and you said it's the Church of God. So I'm gonna start. Well, I am in the Church of then God. Why don't you, the church then why don't you call the Church of God? Why don't you call the Church of God? I am. Why don't, in the you, why don't you tell? Now, why don't you tell your pastor? What's his name? Edwin Moore. Is your pastor named Edwin? No. What's your pastor's name? That's not the old man. Well, I'm. I, I'm. Sure. What's the Bible say? Got it. Yes, sir. Uh, we met once uh, at your church. I'm Jimmy Whitlow. Yes, sir. And uh, I came to your church for a friend of mine's funeral once. I remember that. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I thought a lot about what you've been explaining about denominational, denominations, and I'm a member of a Southern Baptist church. Yes, sir. And I've decided to answer your question about why I'm in a Baptist church as this. Okay. I go to the Church of Christ over at Fontaine Baptist. That's all I want to say. Thank okay. you. All right. All right, now, folks, <clears throat> I'm running out of time here, but <clears throat> could have played more, but just want you to notice how many times people say, well, I, I'm in the Church of Christ, but I'm over here in the Baptist. Friends, that's like saying you're a man and a woman. No, one way or the other. You're not in Christ. You're not in the body of Christ, and then in a church that's not the body of Christ. This, we're dealing with facts here, friends. We're dealing with facts. You are not a child of God. You're not a child of Abraham. You're not in, in, in the body of Christ if you're in a man-made body, a man-made church. Now, friends, I, I don't know how to say it any other way. That's just facts. We're dealing with facts here. Now, friends, if you want to hear more, I'm running out of time. But I want to give you my content information. The Church of Christ meets at 250 Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina. It's where we assemble Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., and Thursday nights at 7 p.m. And friends, you can call me anytime you want to. 276-340-2653 is my cell phone number or a word from the Lord at gmail.com. Friends, all we're concerned with is making sure that you get a word from the Lord. We hope that you will continue listening to your friends. And we'll see you back here next week, 5 o'clock. God bless.